Hi, I've had some staff members ask recently how to make groups in Gmail. So I thought I'd make a video on it. So let's get started. All right, so to make a group in Gmail, we are going to go to our waffle and we're gonna go to contacts. Now you might see something called groups in your waffle and you might be thinking, I should go to groups because I want to make a group. We do not have the ability to make a group in groups. If I open it up here, let's take a look. So these are the district groups. So like teachers of Jackman Elementary. If you type in, if you're a Washington local teacher or a staff member, if you, anyone in the district types in teachers of Jackman Elementary into their um, Gmail, they will have all of those teachers in that email. They won't have to type them in individually. So these are groups that the district manages. We cannot make a group in here. And that makes sense because we don't want a bunch of different groups being created in here. <clears throat> it would get really confusing. What we're going to go over today is how you can go to contacts and create your own group. All right, so let's click on contacts and get started. All right, so this is contacts. Yours will look very different. You will have a lot of contacts. So if I want to import a database of, of emails and phone numbers that I already have in a spreadsheet, I can do that. So here is a spreadsheet. I have information for my parents in my class. I sent out a Google form and they had to answer some questions. So I've got their name, I've got their email, and then their phone number. I have other information that won't come over into your contacts, so you don't have to worry about making a separate spreadsheet that just has name, email, phone number. It just won't grab the other stuff. All right, so the first thing I do need to do, you see there are no labels here, so I need to create a label. So I'm gonna click that plus sign, and I'm gonna call this parent contacts and then I'm gonna click Save. So now I have a label. Because I have a spreadsheet that I wanna upload, I have to click Import. Right at the top it says Import Contacts, no label. But I'm like, wait a minute, I wanna make sure that I label this. And so when I click on No Labels, I can select Parent Contacts. And then you always have to click Apply, so important. Now, this says to import contacts, select a CSV file. Well, like I said, I have a Google Sheet, but don't worry, it's really easy to turn a Google Sheet into a CSV file. You simply go to File, Download, and then you have the option of downloading it as a comma-separated value file. So I'm gonna select that going to ask me what I want to call it. I'm going to call it contacts. Click save. I'm going to move this out of the way and then now I'm going to select that file. So I'm going to find contacts here. Double click on that. I've got it right there and then import. Easy peasy. Now it's doing its magic and right there. So you notice this isn't what I called it. I called it parent contacts. Well, let's take a look. I still have parent contacts and I also have a label that is called imported on 418, which is today's date. If I click on parent contacts, it's the exact same list. So even though I labeled it, it's still almost giving me another backup that's saying, here's a list that I imported, but I don't want that because I don't want it to gum up my contacts and my label list. So I'm just gonna click delete. Now this is really important. You wanna make sure that you select the top part which says keep all your contacts, but delete this label. Because if I select this one, delete all the contacts and delete the label, all my parents' emails and information is gone. So be careful and make sure that you select that top one and then select delete. So now I have parent contacts and I have all of my parents listed there. So that is the first way. So let's, let me show you what it looks like when you go to email. 
So when I go to email my parents, I am not going to put all of them in this to section. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click on BCC and that means blind copy. And this is where I'm going to put my parent emails. So I'm going to go parent contacts. Here's my parent contacts. Here they are. The reason I'm not putting them in the two is because I don't want them to see each other's email. And then I'll hit send. So the second way I'm going to show you is, is how you can manually add uh, people in your contacts to a label. So let's, for this example, I'm going to say um, I have a PBIS team. So I'm part of the PBIS team and I want to very quickly, if I need to email the group, I just want to be able to type in PBIS instead of finding that piece of paper that has everyone else on the team. I just have it ready to go. So we're going to start right here, just like we did before. We have to create this label. So you're going to click that little plus sign and you're going to call it PBIS. Easy peasy. And click save. All right, so I have my label. So now I need to search people first and then add that label to the contact. So I'm just going to go in here and I'm just going to type in Amy Radke. All right, so I've got Amy. I'm going to click this. And then you're going to see underneath her email schedule and all that information, I have this thing that says label with a plus sign. So I'm going to click this and it's going to bring up all of my labels. And I don't want to put her in parent contacts. I'm going to put her in the PBIS. And then always hit apply. And now it will show that she has the PBIS label there. And then I can find another person. And once again, label, PBIS, apply. Now, if someone already has a label, you can just click on the little um, manage label, which is that little pencil, and then add another label. And notice I have the option to create a label. So let's say I'm in Jen's and I'm like, you know what? She's also on the ACT team. So I could do that, click save, and then now she's on the ACT team and the PBIS committee. So that's how you add that label to your um, people in your contacts. So when I click on the PBIS team here, I have the, the um, teachers that I added that label to. And if you notice on Jen, she is also on the ACT team and the PBIS. Now, if you ever have to edit your labels, you can, it's very simple. Let's say maybe a teacher next year is no longer on your PBIS team. And that's the thing with labels, um, slash groups is you do need to maintain them. So you have to, when new staff comes in, you need to add them. When people leave, you need to delete them. So I'm gonna remove Amy. So I have her selected. I'm gonna go all the way over to the skinny snowman. And I just click it and I'm going to click off of the PBIS. And notice there was also remove from label so there's two ways to do it. Remove from label or I could just click off. There is no apply with this one. It's kind of weird. But the minute I click off of it, you see she's gone. And then I could do the same um, for Jen. So now I have no one on my PBIS committee. Um, so those are the two ways that you can create a label in Google Contacts. It's really convenient. Um, I have quite a few labels in my contacts and I highly suggest um, you create some labels, makes your life easier. It's those little things that save us time. The only thing, the only caveat with when you create a label in contacts, you are the only person that can use that label. So this is just for you. All right, let me know if you have any questions and have a fantastic day.